Mr. Speaker, Order. my question is to the Minister for ACC and asks, what evidence does he have that victims of sexual abuse suffer from clinical mental disorders and why is he insisting that victims of sexual abuse will have to be diagnosed with a clinical mental disorder from the American Diagnostic and Statistical Manual version 4 before their claims for ACC funded counselling are accepted? Honourable Mr. Speaker. Dr. Nick Smith. Mr. Speaker, the law requires that ACC can only accept sensitive claims from those diagnosed with a mental injury. This government has made no changes, nor does it intend to make any changes in this regard. The changes that are raising controversy in this area arise from the implementation of new clinical guidelines based on com comprehensive research from Massey University on the right care for sensitive claimants. And I remain of the view that clinicians and not politicians should decide on appropriate treatments. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary to the Minister. What was his response to the 200 protesters who marched on Parliament yesterday that the added stigma of a mental disorder would put people off seeking help and what support would be available for sexual abuse victims who will require counselling which is not related to clinical mental disorders? Mr. Dr. Nick Smith. Mr. Speaker, I would say to them, as I say to all members of the House, that they should read the Injury Prevention, Rehabilitation and Compensation Act that requires a mental injury to have occurred for there to be a valid claim. I quote section 27, which says, and I quote, mental injury means a clinically significant behavioural, cognitive or psychological dysfunction. Members opposite say that's wrong. That is the law that stood in place for the entire time of the act that they passed in 2001. Lynn Pillay. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What does the Minister say to the hundreds of councillors who marched in the streets yesterday who say the new ACC guidelines are not best practice? Is he saying that they are not qualified and not expert? The Mr. Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, I'd firstly say that as Minister and this Government, has made no decisions in respect of dealing with sensitive claims. The changes arise from a piece of work that occurred under the previous government by Massey University, and the decisions have been made by clinicians on the basis of what is thought to be the best standard of practice. And I am very hesitant as a minister to overrule the decisions of skilled clinicians. Rahui Katane. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Supplementary to the Minister, what response does he have to the situation described in today's Herald by an Auckland mother of three who states that the psychiatric test set to be imposed on sexual abuse victims as a requirement for ACC support almost killed her? Oh, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, I note that the person referred to was actually assessed last year under the previous government. And this reinforces the fact that the legal test for a valid claim has not changed. I have confidence that psychiatrists can professionally do their assessments without putting people's lives at risk and stress again that we as politicians should leave clinical decisions to clinicians. Question number six, the Honourable David Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for ACC. What is the proposed increase in ACC levy fees for a car, and how much would it have been if the date for full funding of the motor vehicle account is not extended? Uh, Mr. Speaker. 